Uh, all right, LSU 20-7 to losers over the weekend versus Texas A&M. They will now host Alabama on Saturday night. The news came in over the weekend that that game was going to happen uh, coming up on, uh, on Saturday. It's going to happen inside Tiger Stadium, and it's going to be a 7 o'clock kickoff on CBS. Which, uh, which means that uh, whiskey and wine is going to uh, is going to happen about 2 a.m. And T-Bob will pass the baton to you and Hannah Griff about 4 a.m. I uh, am to send us home for a little pregame there if, for if, the Saints on Sunday. If, if I catch an extra hour with an 11 a.m. kickoff, y'all are catching the extra hour pregame with this 7 p.m. kickoff. Uh, that, that's just how it has to be done. Well, whatever. We'll work all that out. Let's start with the Terrace Marshall news, right? Uh, well, Tev- uh, so Terrace Marshall yesterday uh, informed – LSU that uh, he was going to be opting out of the remainder of the season as uh, he posted the message on Instagram yesterday afternoon. uh, And he says, uh, amongst other things, uh, that since a kid to play in the NFL and to retire my parents has been my number one mission after careful consideration. But with faith, I have decided to declare for the 2021 NFL draft. He thanks his parents, his sisters. He also thanks the LSU staff and Coach O for presenting him with the opportunity. Oh, sniper! To Got contribute him. to uh, to LSU, he says his three years at such a great university will be forever cherished. Got uh, that ring? So uh, yes, yeah, so Terrace Marshall, uh, as uh, up to this point, uh, as we said inside of headlines, has played in all seven games of his junior season, leading LSU with forty eight catches, seven hundred and thirty one yards, and scored his tenth. And final touchdown for LSU Saturday night in a 20 to seven loss versus Texas A and M. Uh, there, there were rumors, and there were there, there were things last week that were that were starting to bubble up that there was a big time player that was going to opt out over the weekend. Yeah. People were talking about that, um, you know, just kind of on on message boards. People were talking about it inside of the Bayou Four chat app. People were asking uh, out on the streets when you would get out and talk about LSU football. People wondering if, they were a, if there was a big name on the horizon, on the doorstep, that was going to opt out. Uh, I had not heard anything officially or heard anything around the program, uh, but then over the weekend you started to really hear some things that, that there was a player and there was a high-end player that was really thinking about shutting it down for the rest of the season. Uh, my initial thought was Ed Ingram when I had heard the rumors. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know if Ed Ingram has yet still not notified LSU on what his plans are for the remainder of the season. Uh, when, when, I, when I initially saw Marshall, I, I was a little taken aback with, with Shy. I just didn't think that it was going to be him. Uh, but the more you Well, you did just of, have the meeting two weeks ago where he was like, right. you know, I could well, opt I mean, out it looked and I like, stuck around. It looked like, around. I mean, everything, everything that was, that, 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 you know, all of the evidence around Marshall was that he was going to stick this thing out. Yeah. You know, I mean, he only had three games left to play. And by all accounts, um, I don't think that there was any doubt of his status uh, of the next level. I mean, he feels like a top 15 pick, right? Uh, I mean, he feels like he is a first round. I don't know about round. top 15, but, it, but he'll, be, he'll be borderline first round, first, second round sure. receiver for sure. So he stands to make millions of dollars. And there's nothing else that he could prove um, I know, agree. on the field. Now, it is, it, it is, I would say, the week of the Alabama game where you would have your biggest challenge in Patrick Sertain uh, Jr., who has been dominant in college football this season has almost had like a Derek Stingley Jr. type freshman season where he just has not allowed anything on his side of the field. Would be a fantastic matchup that I'd imagine pro scouts would be yearning to see. But you've seen enough of Marshall if you're a pro scout. I don't think that you need to see anything else to prove to you that he can play at the next level. Um, The decision to step away from the team for the last three weeks uh, is, is, is going to come into criticism just because of the team aspect of football, um, but I have to be honest. I don't know if the NFL though is really going to. No, not the at NFL. Not the NFL. I'm talking about here. Oh yeah, locally, okay, yeah. Locally, I, I don't think that the I think that the NFL probably advised him. Yeah, you know, that there was probably people around the NFL, whether it be scout decision makers, people that they know within the industry, that said, "Yeah, like we don't need to see anything else." Yeah. You know, I mean, you 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 could probably walk away now and still maintain your status of of where you sit. Um. So, you know, I mean, I, I, it, it, it rocks LSU. You know, I mean, it, it rocks LSU in a, in a time where LSU feels very vulnerable, very fragile, um, feels like they are just kind of a, a breath away 
from imploding. Marshall feels like a symptom of a much larger problem. Um, so, 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 Jordy, it seems like a lot of the tenor of this conversation is taking on a debate between what, what's the difference between opting out or quitting, right? And Terrace Marshall quit. I don't even really care about that semantic argument. If, if you say quit, if you say opting out, whatever, in the end, it's the same, right? You're not on the team. What is also the same is the underlying logic behind his decision. And it's hard to argue with that logic if you were to put yourself in his shoes. As we said, I don't think he can significantly affect his draft status in a positive way over these next three games. The only thing he could get due to significantly affect his draft status would be to get hurt, which would significantly ding his draft status, especially when you look at his injury history. I think it's also interesting if you look at it from a schedule perspective, Jordy. He finished out what would have been the original regular season end, right? I mean, uh, th th this would have been the final game, and then uh, you move on and you start to get ready for the combine. And the latter part of that is very important to highlight there because – when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about getting ready for the combine, the combine is not football training; it is its own training regimen within itself that you just have to do to be able to prove that you can test well to then increase your draft stock. Right. So the more delayed you are in getting to combine training, the harder it is to move up the board by going out there and dominating. So what he does now, he finishes out what would have been the original end of the season. He hits that same rhythm, and now he gets to start a month ahead of time on that combine training without having to go out there and delay a month just to go and play with freshman quarterbacks in a bad O-line and lose two, maybe three games in a row. So, like, I, I just find it very hard, regardless if you want to say quitting or opting out, I find it very hard to disagree with Marshall's logic. And I feel like if you were in the same shoes, you'd be feeling a lot of the same way. And, again, uh, I think that his quitting or opting out is less of a Terrace Marshall problem and more – of an LSU problem. Uh, 2020 LSU is representative of a tale as old as time, which is like, look, you if you're not ready for success, it can, it can break you. And it can break sometimes even seemingly the most solid of situations. And that's what happened with this team. I mean, the, the, the locker room situation seems like it's been to toxic since the summer. The on-the-field play has been poor all season long. Doesn't seem like there's much trust between the players and the coaches across the board. The the hires don't look good at all. Uh, it it doesn't look like the players trust the new hires, and the the, the performance hasn't been there. Like as bad as Bo Pelini has been, Scott Linehan hasn't good I been good either. He hasn't been record settingly bad, and with the Brennan Brennan injury, I think the offensive staff has had more kind of adversity to deal with. But there's still been zero innovation. Or more frustratingly, there's been zero customization to what this team is. Like, you're still trying to hurry up and run those short yardage zone plays that everybody knows you're going to, only you're not talented enough to pull it off anymore. You're not talented enough to consistently get that with your O-line or with your running back, and yet LSU still just stubbornly continues to do that. Like, if you're game planning and LSU gets to a fourth and short, just immediately line up and expect zone, and, and, and you'll be right every time. Now, you can get away with that if you were good enough, but they're not. But they're like, So that highlights their unwillingness to customize this offense. So, again, like you can be angry with Terrace Marshall, but just look around the program. The vibes around the program are really bad right now. Everybody's talking about firing coaches, sexual assault, domestic violence scandals, and suing cover-up allegations are mentioned every time LSU is. We mentioned the lack of trust. And what are you playing for? It's not like he's in a championship run. You already have a national championship. And here you are, and and like I said, you you got the NFL, you got your future to think about. You here on the cusp of your dreams. You got to get ready for the combine, and what you're going to stick around to go play with a freshman quarterback against Alabama, you play with a freshman quarterback against Florida, against Ole Miss. It just it's it's hard to fault him, in, in my opinion. We will talk to Verge Osbury, executive director, deputy director of athletics, next year on Off the Bench.